In this video, I'm gonna give you seven tips on why you should get yourself the little Canon 50 millimeter F 1.8 STM and how you can crush it with this lens. Coming up. Hey, my name is Paul Hamlin from Studio Hamlin, and on this channel we do tech review, we have some filmmaking and photography tips and tricks. So if you're new to this, oh, I was spitting. So if you're new to this channel, consider subscribing. Now let's dive into the seven tips that I have and some places where I don't think that you should use it. Stay tuned. So tip number one, product photography. I love taking product photography. I love controlling it. You can do so many different things with it. And this 50 millimeter lens from Canon is very good for doing product photography. You get an amazing depth of field, beautiful bokeh. It opens up to f1.8, which is such a huge difference compared to, for example, your kit lens that might open to around three and a half or maybe even four and a half. The difference is huge. So with this little 50 millimeter, you can get really nice and close to the product, small things, but it's versatile enough to use it for bigger things as well. And if you want to go even bigger, of course you can take pictures of huge things like cars. One thing to keep in mind is that you need to have a certain distance from a big object as the 50 millimeter is not exactly a wide angle lens. Now another fantastic trick that I have up my sleeve for you guys to learn today. Hold on. Hold on. So you're there taking pictures of these beautiful little objects with your lovely 50 millimeter lens. Now, if you want to go even closer to one of the objects, look at this. Turn the lens around, zip, and you have yourself a macro lens. That's tip number two, macro. You can get really nice and up close to the products or whatever you're taking pictures of in macro style. I do suggest using a tripod for that because every little movement, you know, it seems like there's an earthquake or something. Put the camera on the tripod, just hold the lens loose in front of the camera without the lens cap and shoot away. You're gonna get some great, interesting looking results. And it just opens up a completely new kind of look for your portfolio. Now, tip number three is food photography. Now with food photography, you get like a soft reflection from the different vegetables maybe, or whatever you're taking pictures of. So you might be in a restaurant where the food comes and you're like, oh my gosh, this looks amazing. I'm gonna snap a picture of that with my camera and 50 millimeter lens. And you might be in a different country. You might be traveling and the food comes out and you're like, what? Speaking of traveling, that leads me to tip number four, which is traveling in itself. Since this lens is so nice and small, you can easily put it in your pocket or your backpack, whatever. You might have your kit lens on the camera, which is usually something like this. You might have like a slight zoom. Not impressive. Put on the 50 millimeter lens and just get nuts with it, <laughs> get crazy with it. So it's so nice and small, it doesn't weigh anything. I travel with this one and I use it much more than I do my big lens because the big lens weighs a lot. You can use it the whole day. If it's starting to get darker, maybe you're in a bar, cafe, put this one on instead of your kit lens and the results are gonna be fantastic. And that leads me to point number five, night photography. As I just said, you're gonna be able to take pictures in low light situations. Because the lens is so fast, it really sucks in that good light into the camera 
and just makes the background nice and blurry. Before we continue, if you feel that you're getting any good advice, go ahead and smash that like button. Let's continue. Tip number six is nature photography. Great for taking pictures of flowers, bugs, trees, plants, animals. And again, you get this fantastic blurry background. You can get like amazing vistas, panoramic shots with it, but there are limits to it. And I'm coming up with that in a minute. Now, before we go on to the places where I don't think that you should use the 50 millimeter, let's go to tip number seven, which is portrait. And it's also great for interviews. Just put that 50 millimeter on it and you get a nice blurry background. You know, like always, that's what we love here. And yeah, back to you, Paul. The 50 millimeter is more or less what your eyes see. So when you take a picture of a person, it looks very natural. And as the lens is this small, you might be taking pictures of someone who are not professional Ten years later, now I'm rocking the orange paint. models or actors if you have this lens in front of them it's not that intimidating if you come with a lens like this that is going to be intimidating for that person you know might start sweating now let's talk a little bit about the limits to the 50 millimeter 1.8 a lot of people have asked me on YouTube if you can use the 50 millimeter 1.8 for astrophotography, because you might think since the lens is so fast, it can open 1.8 to get that nice starry. Uh, I have to disappoint you here and say, not very good for astrophotography because the lens is not at its sharpest at 1.8. The field of view is not wide enough to take great astrophotography. Instead, you would need something like the Samyang 14 mm Check out the video, I'm gonna put a link somewhere. Another place where it has its limits is architecture or big buildings, because you need to have a certain distance from that building for it to actually fit in the frame. And if you are traveling, as I mentioned earlier, if you want to take a picture of a building or a monument, you do need to make sure that you have that distance. And on the opposite side, it's not very good to do, for example, sports photography, because you are actually not close enough to the subjects. They're gonna be way too far away when you film or take pictures with a 50 millimeter. Do keep in mind that if you have a full frame camera, of course, this is a 50 millimeter lens. However, if you have a cropped sensor camera, like an APS-C, there will be a crop there of 1.6. So the 50 millimeter becomes more like a 70, how much is that? 70, 75 millimeter? So if you want to have the 50 millimeter look with a cropped sensor camera, you can also get yourself a 24 millimeter, for example, that will actually become close to a 50 millimeter on a cropped sensor camera. I'm gonna put the link below for a 24 millimeter as well, in case that interests you. So if you only have your kit lens and you want to update that lens, I would definitely look into the 50 millimeter. That was the first lens that I upgraded to and I still have it. I love it. You won't regret it. I'm gonna put the links below for you guys to check out the price. It should be around $100, $125. You might get lucky and get a deal. Until next time, this is Paul signing off. Take care, bye.